Hey guys, it's Ahmed Sami. Hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to talk about my first little script that I made right here. This tiny script does not create some kind of cool graphics or element inside of After Effects, yet sometimes just being able to work faster makes a big difference. Like imagine if you have four arms, it would look kind of weird, but think about how much work you can get done. And sometimes you may want to embellish your animation, mo your animated motions with a bit of physical realism, like adding overshoot or bounce or anticipation, just like that. So this script was designed around things I wanted to be able to do in After Effects to increase my workflow speed and make my animations a bit more realistic and smooth. So as we all know, expressions in After Effects is very powerful and handy tool. And to be able to add physical realism to your animations without using a lot of keyframes saves you a lot of time without with more accurate and satisfying result. Like this footage here. The ball is coming up, stretching and squashing doing a little bit bounce and then anticipated doing some anticipations and disappear so without further ado let's get into it this is this script let's dock it right here so those two overshoot and bounce back those two applies expressions let's move here those two applies expressions to a selected properties within these layers like position scale rotation anchor points those two based on Dan Ebert in this website motionscript.com realistic bounce and overshoot two expressions do a lot of math to create with some realistic physical movements just like this one this one is overshoot and like this one this one is bouncing bounce back you can bounce it on any any surface or any floor so visit this website it's legit it's amazing motionscript.com so let's apply some overshooting to this animated position like let's do 10 frames position let's do it just like that and So, basic animation, position from here to there. Now let's add some overshoot. Just select the property you want to add the overshoot and click overshoot. Expression will add it for each individual layer with two uh, maximum amplitude, frequency and decay. Those are editables and let's see the animation let's do one of them and just like that added some overshoot without even giving it any additional keyframes it's just two keyframes and the magic done here and so on for all of my layers my balls here. Let's now use the bounce back expression. Just select all of these, all of these layers and hit bounce back. It's now changes the expression. Now you have those variables.
You can of course edit like the gravity. Let's make it 2000 to make it even higher. Just like that. If you edited this expression and you wanted to do it to all of these layers, just copy it, paste it right here on set expression area. And you can apply it to position, rotation, scale, and anchor point directly without even selecting the property. Just select the layers and P for position. Now the expression in all of these layers is updated just like the above. 2000, 2000. Now they are all have the same amount of bouncing. Or if you just don't want to a certain position of these, you can just select the property and hit apply. If your property is not here, one of these four. Anticipation is doing some anticipated movement like this, anticipation. It prepares your eyes for the next movement. So for this to come here with anticipation, it has to go up and this and then goes down, just like that. And let's make it 15 frames. And let's add some easing with this helpful scrap motion too. This is cool. Now those were overshoot, bounce back, anticipation. We're going to explain them even further in this example. The ball, it's just a ball surface. We'll get right into it after we're done with explaining the interface. We're going to make this example here using just basic keyframes and this up and then apply those expressions to it to make it look cool. So overshoot, bounce back, anticipation, and set the expression area. Let's say you want a wiggle. Well, to make it visible, let's make 10 and 10. Let's select all of our layers and hit position. Now look what happened. They are all wiggling around. Control Z. Now those two puppet to nulls allows you to link every puppet pin in anybody to a null so that you can apply any expression of these to your null. Like if we had a rectangle right here and we wanted to add puppet here, here and here. Just click puppets to null and it creates automatically puppets to control every null of these because the puppet does not um, you know you can't add expressions in a puppet show so just basically what puppet to null does is link every puppet to a null so you can do some physics or you know for easy access for the expressions so if you wanted to do a position for let's solo these. P 
position right here and then go here and do such thing here it is basic and now you can apply overshoot to this now to make it even cooler you can use it for amazing uh, things I'm going to explain it further next now for the f uh, for the fifth one separate scale X Y and Z you know you can separate dimensions in the position property you can have the Y position and the X position individually but in the scale you can't have such a thing separate dimensions is off so basically this if you select a layer and hit separate X and Y so basically what it does is check if the layer is 2D or 3D if it's 2D it's going to add X scale and Y scale and now you can control this you cannot control this scale from up here now because it's linked to this to those sliders in this slider this is the X you can control it individually and this is the Y so that in this way you can add some script stretch and squatch for your animations and if you want it just to roll back and you don't need to separate dimensions just hit separate scale again and all of these will disappear if the layer were was 3d and hit separate scale xy you have x scale y scale and z scale we don't need that yet so hit the button again and return to 2d so to make the animations more cooler cooler let's say let's add offset in time for these layers just let delete these let's offset these you can offset these by doing it manually like two frames hit two frames here two frames and so on and if you do have a lot of layers this will take a lot of time so we come here layer sequence you can do offset between layers and the amount you do put here so let's say I want it to be three frames just type three and apply it applies if you want it just like that if you want it ascending or descending it's basically doing the offset depending on the way you select the layer if from top to bottom then it's descending if it's from if it's from bottom to top then it will be ascending and so on so you can do some cool animations let's put this here and you have cool animation now that's cool let's make all of this linear again and hit overshoot and there you have it it's now overshooting and let's make it bounce bounce back just like that overshoot you know a note just a note overshoot and bounce back does not work on easing frame it just work on linear 
while the anticipation can work with any kind of layer. And that's it for the interface. Oh, one more thing, the crop to offset duration. It's like if you don't want the layer to be this tall, you just come here. If you want those layers to be you know, disappearing after the animation, the the frame rate the frames here is fifteen. So select all of these and for example hit fifteen and it check the crop to offset duration, hit apply. And now each one is offsetted by fifteen frames and cropped by this duration. You know, this could be a very useful tool either. And that's it for the interface.